was trying to figure out what the hell is all the hype about. So I went on my Spotify and I was listening to like some of her songs. I was like, Anti Hero's a little bit of a jam. Sip and Chat Cafe. Welcome to Sip and Chat Cafe, a safe space for stimulating conversations. No topic is off limits. If it matters to you, it matters to us. I'm your host, Atara G, and our producer, Motown Maurice. For more information about this podcast and more, please visit MotownMaurice.com. Hey, 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 y'all. So we're back again, and we've reached the midpoint of our first season. Yay! When I said I wanted to do a podcast, well, I've been saying I wanted to do a podcast. I'm always saying, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast. Motown got sick of me. He's like, all right, I'm just going to produce this podcast for you. But his caveat was that we commit to 10 episodes. So we committed to 10 episodes. And today is episode five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am just so thankful for all the people who have come on to the show. The guests have been so inspiring and their willingness to share their personal stories is just really, um, it makes me emotional because personal stories are often not easy to share. Our guest today has been through quite a lot in her life. But like a phoenix, she has risen from all of those trials, stronger, smarter, and wiser. And so ladies and gentlemen and people, please welcome Great Grace. Great Grace. (laughs) Hi, Grace. Hello. (laughs) I am Grace. (laughs) I love that. I am Grace. (laughs) So Grace, life has not always been easy for you. You had some trials very early on, um, starting at birth, actually. Yes. You were strangled by the umbilical cord? Yes. I mean, if you can start any conversation. (laughs) Have you been strangled (laughs) before? (laughs) So how old were you when you found out about your Uh, birth? Like how? Maybe it was in the bathroom and she was taking a shower. And I saw a scar, maybe, or oh, something. Okay. Something. It was, I mean, it's. Yeah. It's that's, that's so interesting. Yeah. So you just were, it was just, you guys were in the bathroom together and you just casually found out? Well, I was young. So, I mean, being young, you're just like, okay, curious. And then, you know, and I, at that time, you know, we were living together, like, like all the families. I have two older brothers. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Um, I usually sleep with my father and my mother because, mm-hmm. you know, my mother, she was a nurse. So, oh. yeah, she worked in the uh, OBGYN unit. Yeah. So she always you know, t- okay. took care of the babies and everything. So so your mom, um, mm-hmm. I know she's n- n- no longer with us here on this mm-hmm. plane. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about about that, about oh. your mom? Like where- Oh, she was, a, she was a fire. She just was a, a girl from the South. Because uh, she lived in the southern Thailand. of, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, she did live in a log cabin uh, that was built by my grandfather. Um, he had nine children. Oh, wow. uh, so, again, being from the south, yeah, it's not pro- like the riches, but, you know, it's all about love, community, and just like getting out there, following your dream. Um, so, But at that time, I think there was like um, – a surge in nurses in the healthcare to bring all the East, uh, Southeast mm. Asians and they were opening the gateway. So mm-hmm. it was just like, she had that opportunity and she was like studying nurse because uh, her brother um, was a doctor, a cardiologist. Mm. So my uncle, um, I mean, they all graduated masters and everything. It's just like, just from a small Southern, I kid you not. Yeah. And then they were able to, you know, have a good life, open a clinic, you know, be a title of anything, you know. Did they open the clinic in Thailand or they all? In Thailand. So <laughs> only my uncle did because he was okay. like, yeah, and he was a strong figure in his community in the southern of Thailand. Mm-hmm. So Songkra. Yeah. Songkra. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom is a nurse mm-hmm. and I remember her going to nursing school when my brother and I were little. And she would have us read her textbooks to her. 
she would be resting, you know, because she worked and went to school and was taking care of two kids. And so she would read. <laughs> she would have my brother and I read her textbooks to her. And we would learn. All, that's I mean, literally, that's why my brother and I have such a great vocabulary is we would learn all these ridiculous words because she would make us. We couldn't just read the word and move on. We we would have to understand this what it meant. Amazing. And to this day, I mean, Motown will tell you if I'm watching a show or I'm reading something, pause. We have to look up what this word means. I cannot move forward mm, unless because mm, mm. you're if you don't understand the word, you're missing a whole. You don't. Right. You're not getting the context of what is being said. Mm. Nurses are really special. I don't think. I think you have to be to be a nurse. There's something that already has to be existing in you. You know, you don't learn that in nursing school. I think you learn all the technical stuff and the medicinal stuff while you're in nursing school. But there's a part of your character that has to already exist Correct. in order to be yes. a nurse. Yes. Yeah. So were you born here or there? I was born in Chicago. You were born in Chicago. Yeah. And were your brothers born? In, Chi in, in Chicago. All in Illinois. Okay. So your so. parents, they met in Thailand. Mm -hmm. They married in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And then they came here to Chicago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again... Another commonality we have, because my bonus mom is from Chicago. Mm. This is so crazy. Um, no, it's not crazy. It is. It's fate. Fate. It's yes. Not, it's Maybe. Crazy. You know, it's, it's a mycelium yeah, thing it's where fate. it's all connected. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, okay. So it's, it's, your parents are yeah. in Chicago together. Yeah. Um, I wanted building, to building. build building a yeah. life together. I wanted right. to touch on something because you said your mom was a breadwinner mm -hmm. and your father, you know, and this is probably a totally another podcast. Mm -hmm. It is, but not for today. But I just do want to touch on, I don't think there's anything wrong mm -hmm. with the woman being the breadwinner and the the the, the man being the nurturer mm -hmm. or the supportive one who stays home. Mm -hmm. I think what's important in relationships is that people support each other in the roles that they do best. Mm -hmm. So if your role is going out and being the breadwinner, you do that best, mm -hmm. then you do that. And if the man's role is better at staying home and taking care of the kids and being mm -hmm. the nurturer and being supportive when his woman gets home, then you do that. Like that's, and I know that's an unpopular opinion, mm -hmm. but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So kudos to your parents for yeah. doing what worked best for yeah. them I, again i think it's love yeah, no matter it's what love. it's just my father was like he, he worked for the city so we were like the like you would be considered like a water department like the ladwp mm -hmm. so he worked he was checking all the water like system and everything filtration so he had the mind of it because he graduated with an engineer he gave that up he gave that up and just to follow my mother's dream he saw the future in her eyes and he saw okay yeah you know what i don't want my children to be in this situation because at that time um men all boys have to be drafted and in our family mm -hmm. it's like we can't we can't have anyone in the military so mm -hmm. that and you know at that time it's like mm -hmm. education yeah you have to know the system yeah. you have to know like what is good for you and my yeah took a chance like he didn't even know but you know at the same time it's the love and the support and then it's like and my mom was working so hard you know getting the visas getting everything mm -hmm. going back and forth mm -hmm. and in the end she lived her american dream that she wanted but i think that's the, the fire you know it's mm -hmm. like i don't like the situation i am in i am going to get out yeah and yet, you know you just go for it. you shoot rockets that's the thing that's special about immigrants they see themselves in a situation they want out and they find a way out mm -hmm. against all odds sometimes mm -hmm. knowing they may not su su uh, survive the path that they've taken to get out mm -hmm. you know which is very different it's a very different kind of attitude as an american <laughs> So Grace, you're living in Chicago, you're about 10 or 11 years old, and your next life-changing event happens. The appendicitis, that's the first thing I can remember. One day, I think my family was visiting. My mom's side of the family usually visits from Thailand, so that was the best like family gathering. And one morning, got up and just knocked, like fainted, black, black out. I never, never, and I didn't know where where I was, what's going on. And then I think I was able to call out to my dad or my mom saying that, hey, 
I'm down on the floor. I can't. Like, it's like, I can't. It's like, and then I think, boom, end up at the hospital ER. And all of a sudden the doctor says, okay, good thing you came because, you know, this is about to explode. So it was like, yeah, I was holding on to it and I didn't even know the sensation until it was like my body says, boom. So right. you were pretty close call. You were like the end stages of appendicitis yes. when you got to the- About to explode. Um, I think I was able to keep it, but I don't know where it was. <laughs> but it was like, he said, yeah, he, he showed it to me. He was like, dude, look at this, you know? It was like, <laughs> the doctor was really proud. So I was like, I was like, and the incision, I kid you not, was really nice too. This was at the St. Bernard Hospital in Chicago. And then um, again, having like surgery, if like, it's all about hand, like craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. And this guy was really good. And I, again, so great doctors nicely. and yeah. I think there was a time when doctors or the medical facilities used to let you have like your body parts, but they don't do that anymore. And I'm only saying that because I remember growing up, a friend of mine had his wisdom teeth removed and he was showing it off. And then recently, maybe five, six years ago, I had a wisdom teeth removing. The dentist wouldn't give it to me. And he wanted to take more. And I was like, no, <laughs> if I can't have my wisdom teeth, you ain't taking no more. That's a good <laughs> I'm serious. It's like, it's my teeth. Why can't I have it? <laughs> you know what yeah. just makes me think of that movie, Get Out. <laughs> hey, that was a good movie. Yeah. I, that difference is yeah. the whole difference. What are they doing with our body <laughs> parts? Yeah, it's ours. Dang <laughs> it, let us have it. Now you have to ha pay them to take it out and then they get to keep it. Oh, what the heck? oh God. <laughs> so that brings me to another wacky situation. Yeah. Ah, see? <laughs> like, wacky part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> Yes, um, this was during my track and field um, high school. It was springtime. Um, we were doing practices. Two weeks in, I guess I had a viral infection, a cold, a flu. I don't know what it was. So I was really bedridden. One day I would be sweating and it would be like a hundred something. And then it goes down the next day. It was like, just like that, keep going up and down. And so my mom was like, okay, it's something weird. She caught, she caught something, but then at the same time we couldn't explain it. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, okay, just go, go back to normal life. Cause once I was like, okay, I got the flu or the cold out and then went back to school. So during class, I remember it was like my world geography or something. And my friend, she was sitting across from me. was like, why are you winking at me? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm not winking at you. It's like, stop it. And I was like, and then I realized, okay, something's wrong. But then it didn't ca caught my attention. I think it was like two or three days after that. I went to the bathroom and I was like, okay, I'm touching my face. And it's just like, how come... I can see myself in the mirror touching the face, but I can't feel my hand. It's like, it's just like this numbness where it's just like, am I going crazy? And then I ran out of the bathroom and said, dad, dad, it's like, dude, punch me. <laughs> it's like, I don't care, slap, I don't care. Okay, something's wrong, call mom. It's like, it's great to have a mom. <laughs> it's like, she's a nurse. We went to the ER. It was a long time figuring out basically because they couldn't figure out what's going on. Probably the neurologists who figure out, okay, we have something's wrong with the, you know, my electro nodes or whatever, mm -hmm. or lymph nodes or whatever. And then it was just like, it's not responding. The nerve ending is not responding. So it's just like, yeah. So it, it, we figured out it was Bell's palsy. I was like, and then I remember it just breaking down. I didn't even know what it was, but I was just like, is this terminal? <laughs> like, so it took yeah. you about six months of therapy. Yeah. And then that was it. That was it. And you so. were, do you still have any like straggling? Um... Sometimes I, I like during when I have like sick or like I have a cold, sometimes I do get a little freak out. It's like, is it going to happen again? Mm -hmm. It's going to reoccur. Mm -hmm. But then knowing like it's always, I think it's like, dormant but it's like an underlying condition maybe mm -hmm. or something it might not come back because of that gene maybe it is already deteriorated or it's like yeah but it has that mind you know mm -hmm. that little bit it's like is it going to happen again and am i going to be prepared can i make it quicker like the recovery so the appendicitis the bell palsy you know i imagine it's 
you have some anxiety even now as an adult, but then you have a motorcycle accident in 2010. Mm -hmm. What even were you doing on a motorcycle? <laughs> I was working at an uh, advertising agency, uh, Ogilvy, at that time in, in Thailand. So I, I went back um, to live, to, you know, see my family, to get to know my blood, mm -hmm. you know. Over there, there's a motorcycle taxi. So it's like a, it's it's provided by a city, but it's like a private se sector. And basically, traffic in Thailand is horrible. <laughs> it's like parking a lot, like every minute, 30, like every 30 minutes, you're stuck somewhere. Because here's the thing. It's one lane going straight. You're going straight for about like 10 miles and you have to do a U-turn. So that U-turn, yeah, because it's it's the way it's sectioned off, like the city and everything. It's like really crazy. Mm. So, <laughs> so the, good thing my dad got out of that. So yeah. So traffic and then, you know, a lot of cars. So the best way to travel, it's unsafe, but it's the quickest. It's the motorcycle taxi in Thailand. I mean, it's cheap, but now it's not cheap, you know, inflation. Mm. But yeah, at that time, it only took about 10 minutes. But some, you know, to sit in a car, it might be like 30 mm -hmm. minutes, but you can shave it, do it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you can shave it, do it. I, I could apply that to a lot of situations. <laughs> you like that? Huh? Okay. So I got, I got, into, I got on, imagine outside your place, everywhere you go is like eight, like four lanes inbound, four lanes outbound. So he was all the way to the the left, okay? <laughs> it's a riddle now. It's, it's become a riddle. <laughs> left, all the way to the left, he has to make a right to go toward the office. And then I was like, okay, maybe he's just going to slither through because you can do... Oh, Wait, so he yeah. has to cross yeah. seven lanes? Seven lanes to make it oh. to the to the office side inbound, okay? So in there's, is the intersection right now. So I was like, maybe he'll sneak through, like, you know, basically like rattle in like a snake and everything because you can do that, uh -huh. right? like uh, lane crossing. So it's like, I thought he would do that. And then all of a sudden we're at the front of everyone, right? And then before it turned green, so he started to just like slowly ease into from the left. So I was like, okay, maybe he'll, he'll quickly go, you know, he'll speed up, right? So he's moving, he's moving. So, and at the same time, traffic's already, it's green light. And all the cars are coming out this way because oh. he made it past to the left side. Now we're on the right side. Now, th this side is coming, okay? So it's like, okay, dude, speed up, speed up. And I realized just almost maybe like 12 inches away, it w I can remember it's Camry, the headlight just hit his wheel. It was just like only, only a slight tap <laughs> and we slid. I mean, I don't know what happened, but it was just wobbly. And then it was just like, you know, and then I had this thought, okay, Hollywood and everything. Maybe you could just jump off and do something. <laughs> like I had that Hollywood MacGyver going. Okay, so I jumped off, off the bike back, and then I realized I don't know what happened. My foot got caught right in the <laughs> tire, like in the in tube of the wheel. And then I guess that's how we like flung and just slid onto the ground. So I was like, okay, it did stop. But at the same time, one, I was lucky that I didn't get crushed because again, it's left side turning. Uh, left side is always turning. Similar to like right side is always turning. So it's like, good thing no, no cars was coming. No, no cars were like, okay, turn in or anything. So it was like, and at that time, at that midsection, there was a hospital. So I was like, yeah. Girl. Oh, then it just came out, scooped you up and scared you away. Well, at first, at first I was like, okay, you know what? The, and the cops was just like standing there. He's just like, I witnessed the whole thing. I was just like, so you know I'm I'm the victim here, you know. So <laughs> I didn't do anything. It's the guy. And then and overall the company, Ogilvy, number one, they took care of me. Oh, Everything good. insurance was like because here's the thing, the motorcyclist did not have insurance. And well, then, are they supposed to be insured? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it, yeah, you can get away with things. So. <laughs> Goodness. I, but I, again, it's the luck of the draw to, to be, you know, next to this guy, but whatever. Well, you know. it, it seems like you're very lucky because yeah. A, you have a traumatic birth. Mm -hmm. Then you have a appendicitis where you just make it to the hospital in the nick of time. Then you have Bell's palsy. And then you have this motorcycle accident 
and but yet you're still sitting across from me <laughs> in such good spirits. Yeah. Like, how have you managed to? Because not everyone has the fortitude to keep going after all of these things happen so early to them in life. Yeah, you know. And uh, granted, there were you know some time span between each of them. Mm -hmm. But how have you managed to keep going? And that's what I want to get into with you when we come back after the break. What people don't realize is that our ancestors were revolutionaries. So if you have Haitian blood running through your veins, you too have the DNA of revolutionaries. The revolution will not be televised, but it will be streaming. You just heard a snippet of the six-part docuseries, Audacity of Host, which explores the Haitian-American experience of Motown Maurice. You don't want to miss it. Audacity of Host is streaming now on Tubi. For more information, visit MotownMaurice.com. Hey now, hey now, we're back. And like I said before the break, I want to get into where you are now and how, what resources you've used and what, ha what practices do you maintain to move yourself past these traumatic events that have happened. My friend, James, was the one who introduced me. Uh, his name is Satguru. You know, I did look up Satguru, mm -hmm. and um, I did read that he's a yogi and a mystic. But something else that I read was that his mission is to bring inner well-being to every human being, and that he's really dedicated to the physical and spiritual well-being of humanity. And that is what spoke to me the most is his dedication to humanity, mm -hmm. not just people who look like him, not just people that are where he is from, not just people who speak the same language as him, not just people who believe in the same thing as him, but humanity as a whole. And I, you know, especially with what, what has been going on in uh, Gaza, not only right now, but for the last 70 years plus, I like it's I, th I think the world needs to come back to what's right for humanity, mm -hmm. not just what's right for me and my little collection of people, mm -hmm. you know, sure. that's what struck me the most about him is that his intentions, his good intentions are towards humanity. Mm -hmm. He came um, in June to the LA Convention Center. Mm -hmm. So I was like, at that time I was figuring out, oh, should I get this ticket? It's on discount, but it's like, you know what? I'll never meet the guy again. And does he exist? That was the only <laughs> question I had in my mind. It was like, does is he real? Is he like deep fake? Is he just like, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay. And then it turned out, I touched his hand. I mean, there were like those, it's like, it's like, this is what Michael Jackson would have felt of like people yeah. like just being in tears to be in, in that energy, you know. It's a transformational experience. It's called inner engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the word engineering is not too scientific. It's just like, okay, figuring things out. Do you like puzzles? Yes, I love puzzles. There you go. <laughs> right? You only see one segment of that puzzle, but at the same time, there's this big pieces like this you're not finished yet darling mm -hmm. you only saw what you need to get done but then that's how he you know that's how he speaks yeah e eloquently i mean gentle because again it's like you always have to remember it's like you're the mother to the world oh that sounds exhausting <laughs> the mother to the world that's right darling <laughs> We're always cleaning. <laughs> I am right, always cleaning. Right, <laughs> Did we not spoke of that? He was like, oh, my God. We didn't even say good morning. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of deep, the mother to the world. That's what he says every time during my meditation. He's, 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 that's applying to men and women or just women? 
the energy, the feminine energy, yeah. the loving em- energy. Anybody can be nurturing. When we, I think of when you say the word mother, it doesn't yeah. necessarily coincide with the sex of a person. Mm. It's just the energy, that nurturing energy. And while in this world, yes, we apply that to to women, but anybody can be nurturing, can mm-hmm. be a mother. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, Muhammad Ali said something in the likes of our time here on this earth, we're paying rent. We're here for a period of time, and we're we're paying our rent um, to be here. Yeah, and uh, I, I that always resonated with me, and it and this is resonating with me in the sense that we're the mothers of the earth. As we're while we're here, yeah. we're supposed to take care of it. You know, I'm glad you said that because I do have a favorite book of the Bible, mm-hmm. and it's Leviticus. <gasps> And the reason why my favorite book of the Bible is Leviticus is because it's pretty much a handbook for what you should be doing while you're here, which is caring for the sick, feeding the hungry, and taking care of the earth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we say, what's my purpose in life? That is your purpose in life. It's to take care of the sick, feed the hungry, Mm -hmm. and take care of the earth. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But not people don't realize people that. don't realize that. Like how simple is that? Yeah, yeah I mean, air, air is free. <laughs> so it, it, that is it the is. only. That's the only thing that is ever free to, for us to breathe air to do free, what we but do. Not water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and not your teeth. <laughs> your, your, apparently, your teeth don't even belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> they Wisdom belong, teeth. They belong to the dentist. Yeah. You just haven't come to get them yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I always say, it's like, who's moving mountains? Like, if you can move mountains, mm-hmm. you know, COVID was the biggest. And then it's like, who's moving mountains? You know, COVID yeah. was really hard for a lot of yeah. people. It and happened. It happened. And it was really hard. It wasn't mm-hmm. just the illness, it was the isolation that we had from mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. And I was really blessed because I wasn't isolated. I didn't have to go through that mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I came out on the other side of that and heard people's stories about how isolated they felt that I realized how blessed I was. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm not a person who's ever minded being alone. Right. Like, I really value, you know, there's a difference between loneliness and being alone. I have no problem being alone. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And, and let's just be honest, the three of us here are quite privileged during that time because we had the Brawlhalla tournament. Mm. We, that is so true. That's a connection. Spent, we spent a lot. Motown. And, and thank you, Motown, for doing uh, that. Like, no. that was like, that was actually a national. We had people on that Brawlhalla tournament from oh, yeah. all over the country. Rodney. <laughs> Rodney. Know. You got to bring Rodney back. Yeah. <laughs> Rodney. Rodney. That young kid from wherever who won, oh, he who won the money. Oh, he yeah. was good. Yeah. yeah. Like, we we, did, I, we had each other. Yeah. And I think, about, like, all those people who played in that tournament, we don't know how important. Was it just the game that was important? Or was it the yeah. human connection? We don't know. Yeah. For those who don't know, Brawl Holler is a fighting game, kind of like a Smash Brothers-like game, and it's real easy for us to just join each other on different consoles from Nintendo to Xbox to PlayStation. You pop in a room code, and you can fight each other. And I love to put things together, and I was able to just organize a little friendly tournament. Yeah, every <laughs> Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah. Something every like yeah. that. Yeah. And it was, it was cool. It was cool. We, we were dedicated for yes. a while yeah that's the word and it was um, nice. and i enjoyed it i enjoyed it for sure yeah well when you're like mandated to stay home that was fantastic right. yeah. so practicing yoga and meditation mm-hmm. right. i know that has been sense. a big um part of your transformation right. how has that helped you the shambhavi mahamudra kriya it's yeah. a practice yes yeah, it's a hindu, it's a practice. hindu it's practice it's a meditation practice so before you can get into that it's a journey. So you have to do the yoga asanas. So which is the patankasana is a butterfly. So you do that about one or two minutes. Those are poses. Poses, okay. right? So it's a butterfly pose. So it's all in sitting. Um, and then you do about one to two, focusing on the spine. And then we do the shishupasana, which is the 
rock the baby. So we're at Shishu Palasana. So you do, so it's basically holding your leg, holding your leg close to you and just rocking it like a gentle baby, but focusing on your spine. So you do it to your left and to your right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're about two minutes each, and then you do the nari huipachin. So that's the cat poses. The cat pose. Okay. Just look at the animal. Just like look, look at your dog. Like the things he does, and like okay, it's like he's feeling good for yeah. some reason, <laughs> and he's being blessed by everyone around him to take yeah, care. Yeah, she doesn't have to do much for really? herself these okay, days. So. so there you go, and then. That's the same thing. The energy, the frequency, it's like you can you can feel. It's not personifying it. Like you can sense what she's going through. But we can't sense the pain, you know. Mm -hmm. But I know that you're in a relax, you're content, you know. And that's all it is. It's like I'm just stretching. That's so interesting because sometimes I just got her this um, mm -hmm. orthopedic bed. Mm -hmm. And when you lay her on the bed... I can literally feel the relaxation coming off to, off of her mm. as opposed to when I see her laying on the floor because mm. she prefers to lay on the floor. Mm. But when I put her on that orthopedic bed, I just see, I could just see the relaxation in her and I can feel it. Mm. Can't you? Like we were standing there looking at her and we were just like, oh, she's so relaxed. Right. And then we were like both so relaxed. Right. It was like, right. wow. She yeah. was so relaxed, she let out a little pee. Yeah, <laughs> a like, little okay, tinkle. Girl, calm down. Oh, Don't get tinkle. that relaxed. <laughs> See, even Sakura like we said, it's like, we're not even, we're not crying. It's, their energy that makes us cry when you yeah. see something hurt or seeing something relaxed. They're letting out that energy for you to respond. Empathy. That's what it makes yeah. me feel. Like. Empathy. And I think... I think everybody has empathy, but mm -hmm. I think we live in a world that has taught us to block that off. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, not my monkey, not my circus. Mm -hmm. If it does, you know, again, going back to caring about humanity as mm -hmm. a whole, not just your little mm -hmm. circle. Right. We've covered a lot in this yeah. conversation, a lot of topics. I think there's still plenty of areas where we could delve deeper into mm -hmm. if our audience is interested in contacting mm -hmm. you or reaching out to you or just saying hello yeah. how can they find you um right now uh instagram great grace uh great life uh it's at gr81 life uh i also have an email great life center at gmail but Overall, I'm on TikTok now too, okay. showing off Sadhguru's teaching because it's again yoga. I've been doing yoga every day. This morning, like I told you, it it balances you yeah. out. And this time, right now, it's like Jupiter is it? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of abundance or a lot of holding that's been happening. It's not just you. Mm -hmm. Everyone is feeling it, so yeah. don't worry. The whole world is feeling yeah. it. Yeah. It's, can you yeah. um can you say your Instagram handle for us one more time? Yeah, it's at uh, gr81 number eighty one. Mm -hmm. Okay, life. So L I F E. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us today. This has been a great conversation with Great Grace, who's blessed us with her presence. And so, go ahead and. Hit that subscribe button so you never have to miss a single episode of Sip and Chat Cafe. Beautiful. <laughs>